All right, addicts, this is DJ Rem from Rock Addict Radio, and I have Steve from the band Anger is Art. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing good, DJ. How are you doing, man? I am doing very well. Thank you. Perfect. So let's start out. If you can uh, just kind of introduce yourself and the other members of the band that are not with us today and what everybody's spots are. Okay. Well, my, um, starting with myself, my name is Steve Gaines. Uh, Anger is Art, lead vocals, guitar. Uh, started the band back in 2004. Uh, the other members who are not here are also, let's see, Rob Allen is on drums, uh, Dan Oliverio on lead guitar, and Henry De La Cruz on bass guitar, and coincidentally enough, all four members actually spent time in Abattoir along with me. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. How long has Anger as Art been around? We've been around since June 6th of 2004. I remember the date specifically because I was in Cleveland, Ohio, and another band I was on tour with collapsed on tour. It happened to be uh, the 60th anniversary of uh, D-Day, and I sat in the hotel room and thought, okay, what am I going to do next, and decided to put the band together. Very cool. So I I guess my next question is usually, you know, what what made the band happen, but you kind of... You kind of mentioned there, so, you know, how did you kind of get with the other guys to get this rolling? Well, it's a combination of things. I can answer that question a little deeper. Um, I was playing in about four or five bands at the time, and within a three-week period, every last one of those bands collapsed. And I was thinking to myself, okay, this might be the end. You may never work again. What do you want to do? And I had written a bunch of music, and all the bands had passed on those songs, so I decided to go into the studio and record the songs. And it turns out that when I released it, just for the just for the goo, figured this might be the end. Everybody seemed to love it. Suddenly, there was a fan base growing, demand for a band to grow, and uh, one by one, members started coming in and saying, "Let's do this." And we've gone through a couple of personnel changes since, but um, it's been pretty steady since something that started is kind of an accident. Very cool. <laughs> and, and how often are you guys able to get together and practice? Uh, twice a week we try to um, keeps everything sharp in, and specifically if we have shows or tours or something coming up we will rehearse more but in down times we're usually down and doing family stuff you know yep definitely <laughs> definitely and speaking of tours and shows what do you guys have lined up right now anything going on let's see right now we're trying to put the pieces together to get uh, we're looking at an east coast US tour also looking at a west coast US tour uh, trying to get the dates uh, taken care of and book that and get that all put together. We're trying to find a way to get to the Midwest, get to where you're at there, as well as all the way through to Kansas. Uh, there's like a string of fans we got from Michigan through Kansas that we want to go out and perform for. We're also looking at uh, August to be in Europe. We've got a soft confirmation on a festival in Italy, as well as another one across the border in Holland. And we've gone through there a couple times, so it would be nice to go back and see some friends. Um, there is, we're in the planning stages of putting together tours and hoping to be on the road by summertime. Okay, very cool. And I wish you best of luck with uh, getting to the Midwest and <laughs> I mean, going to Europe. That's got to be got to be awesome. So very it's cool. a different world. It really is. So, what what got you into music? What kind of influences have you had in your life that made you want to start doing this and continue doing it? Well, okay, let's see. Uh, when I was about three or four years old, I started singing in church choirs. A very musical family. Mom sang, dad sang, both of my sisters had released records. My brother is a multi-platinum uh, artist as well. And it's just, it, this is what we do. If you don't do music, there's something wrong with you in my family. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Who's your brother, by the way? Believe it or not, it's from the band Stripers, Timothy Gaines. Oh, oh very cool. How about that? <laughs> uh-huh. Very cool. Props to bro. <laughs> yeah, and in fact, he uh, on the new record we just recorded, he actually did a track on the, on the song on the song uh, "Rage and Retribution" with us, which is the first time in all the years uh, that we've ever recorded together. So, kind of a cool thing. Yeah, definitely very cool. So, speaking, you know, back to you with this this album. Is this new? Is this album out yet? No, it releases. It's going to be released on February fifth, and this okay. will be the fourth the fourth record hangers artist done. Okay, that, that, that I thought it was coming up soon. So yes, it's coming quick. So where did you guys record, and what studio did you use? There's a place here in Corona, California, called Trench Recorders, with a guy named John Haddad, who is he's kind of like with, within our group of people, but he just ended up becoming a recording genius. We love the guy, and is incredibly easy to work with. And this is the second album we've done with him. And this time around, we were able to just walk in because we knew exactly what to expect, and we were able to get exactly what we wanted. 
Very good. Very good. Yeah, I mean, I've been, uh, ever, ever since Clawhammer sent the tracks, I've been playing them on my show. I tell you what, la actually last night after you uh, left the chat, I was hoping, I was like, oh, stick around. I'm going to load up some stuff, but you left before I had a chance to play them while you, yeah. while you were in there. But So I threw some tracks in. And everybody, because the chat, I think I had 10 or 12 people in the chat last night at one point, and they were all just like, man, this band's really good. So, cool. I'm glad to hear that. So I had good feedback, I had good, good feedback last night. Nice. That's fantastic. So, and I have been playing you on my other shows, and I do have you in the 24-7 uh, stream at the station as well. So you're awesome. getting, we're, we're helping uh, to get some exposure for you that way as well. Awesome. We appreciate that. That's fantastic. Okay, so... How did you, you know, I'm sure you're asked this question a million times, how did you name the band Anger is Art? <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of self-explanatory. I'm, I'm an angry person usually. I mean, regardless of the happy, jubilant voice you hear on the phone right now, I'm pretty easy to get pissed off. And it was something about taking that emotion of anger and turning it into a form of art. So there's that aspect. Um, and also, believe it or not, the, uh, the Slayer song title, uh, Sex, Murder, Art, always stuck in my head for whatever reason. I love the way it rolled off the tongue. And it's just something about the way the three words together kind of flowed. Also, if you look at, I mean, I'm old school, so I remember record stores. Uh, you get three A's, you're right up in the very front bin by the front door of the store. So people oh, good point. <laughs> uh -huh. As well, as if uh, you're on a festival and people list you in alphabetical order, then uh, bang, you're usually up front. <laughs> you were thinking ahead. Very cool. Um, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know what? Uh, what? What's the goals for for this band? Are, where you where you guys hope to be in a couple of years? I mean, what are your plans here? You know, we've kept the goals pretty simple, and it's worked pretty well for us at this point. Just to keep uh, growing, keep reaching more people, and the simple goal is really this: reach enough people that if they like us enough, we get a chance to do this again in a couple of years. Um, there's no plans for world domination. We're not going to be rich and driving Ferraris on a crab nut. You know, I don't believe any of that stuff. It's We do this because we believe it, and we do this because we love it, and it's just about that simple, I guess. Um, it keeps it true with the fans that way, too. You know, you just, you just want to keep doing it because you're doing it for the right reasons, and if they like it, they'll say, hey, do another one, and hopefully that's what we get. Yeah, very cool. Uh, well, I wish you the best of luck with that, with all those uh, goals. So Thank you. So if I grabbed your iPod or MP3 player from you, what what bands would I find you listening to right now? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because I am one of the few people on this earth that is still analog in a digital world. You'd probably be grabbing my cassette deck for Christ's sake. <laughs> okay, so if I if I had to look in your record player right now or your tape deck, what what bands would I find you listening to? You know, it's, <laughs> joking aside, you probably find bands like Do Scented, who I'm a huge fan of. I'm um, fan of the New Testament album, which I like quite a bit. Um, uh, let's go down the list. I'm still a fan of Priest. I um, mean, kind of anxious to see what Judas Priest is going to do on their next studio record. Um, always a fan of Maiden, love Motorhead. Uh, the Big Four has always been a huge influence. Any of the second tier thrash bands, too. Um, what else? Just, you know, anything that's good and it's aggressive and. Anything that doesn't sound contrived, I want, you know, I've got a thing where I just want people to um, really do things because they love it, because the minute they stop loving it, you can really see right through it. Oh, one other band that gets a special mention that I'm late to the party on is uh, Black Country Communion. And, yeah, good stuff. Uh, oh, God, yeah, it's amazing watching uh, Bonamassa play, you know, I can't call it metal, but uh, to play more of a hard rock thing. Yep. Guys, and, I, I, you know, it takes me back to when I was a youngster. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that one, though. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're lucky. You're lucky that you know vinyl is making a comeback, so you can buy all these bands on vinyl now. So, <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. But uh, <laughs> um, one thing I will say though is that uh, I don't know if it's going to come out with the initial release, but we are doing picture uh, picture disc vinyl of the new album. So uh, if anybody's a vinyl collector, there'll be something coming down the pipe there pretty soon. Yeah, very cool. So w with this uh, this current album that's getting ready to release, how long did it take you from like the writing stage to the recording stage to get everything done? Wow. The writing stage usually goes on. We were actually writing almost immediately after we finished the song, Disfi uh, the album Disfigure. So writing takes place over a period of a good year, year and a half, and then it's just a matter of compiling all of our, rec our uh, written stuff and recording it. Um, we actually finished recording this album last April and just decided uh, one of the biggest mistakes we've made in the past is we end up releasing the albums uh, at the end of the year. 
And you know how the industry shuts down at Christmas time. Yep. So then we get that whole month off where uh, nobody's doing anything. When they come back in January, they're promoting new stuff. So we made the hard decision. We were ready to release in, uh, in July or August. And we made the decision, let's just sit on this thing until we get the whole year to promote it. So that's kind of why we're here right now. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. So when you're not on tour and you're not uh, recording and practicing, what do you like to do to relax? And, and, and or are you stuck in the me- to music all the time? Um, when I get away from the music, it's I'm actually pretty much a simple guy. Uh, stay home. Uh, and fortunate enough to be a homeowner, just stay home, work on the house, uh, sit with the family, sit with the wife, sit with the dog, um, get in the car, drive. <laughs> I'm one of the few that likes to drive around L.A., believe it or not. <laughs> um, just, you know, it's funny because there's times when you're actually out doing the music, you're out there in loud volume and flashing lights and blah, blah, blah. But when it's my time, I love it when it's quiet. There's just something about that. It makes, it makes you appreciate the two much more. Right. Very good. Very good. So what um, what sets you guys up there as a band? People should come to a show, should buy your music. Why why should people uh, check you guys out? <laughs> I could be a smart ass and answer back. Why shouldn't they? <laughs> no. Um, in in all seriousness, I think what we have is there's some honesty. Um, you could break it down by percentages. Uh, say if there's 100 percent of the metal population, uh, thrash appeals to maybe 10 to 20 percent of that. If we reach 10 percent of that population, and we can reach the people who have problems, if you will, releasing their anger. Um, where you're the kind of guy, if you're the kind of guy like I am, you usually get upset. Somebody will get under your skin and you don't quite know how to release it. And we're for those people. So if anybody's got something, they just want to have a catharsis and just let it all go. That's what we're good for and those are the people that we hope to reach. Um, people walk out of the shows exhausted. And thank is always a thanks. I needed that kind of a thing. So if, you know, if we appeal to you, fantastic. But there's going to be some people that, uh, you know, oh, where's the Cookie Monster vocal or something like that? And, you know, that's great. You're going to find plenty of that. We do what we do, and we do it from an honest place. And I hope that connects with people. Okay, well, it connected with me, and it's connected with uh, the fans of the show. So cool. keep, keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank you. <laughs> Definitely. So what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you at a live show that you're willing to share? <laughs> I was playing with the band Bloodlust, who was, I was a founding member of years and years ago, and we were playing at this horrible neighborhood in L.A., and uh, started seeing a fight break out in the crowd, and started seeing gunshots. I mean, loud enough that you can't hear it, but uh, you start seeing flash and people running. And, um, you know, of course, at the time this happened, this was in 1989, I guess, uh, you know, you don't think much about it, and so, oh, oh, somebody had a gun, nobody got hurt, but somebody was shooting and such and such, and then, you know, 20 years after the fact, uh, Dimebag gets killed, and you realize, man, that really could have turned out entirely different. Yeah, exactly. But uh, that was the craziest. I mean, other than that, it's been pretty much the same old, you know, you see people do stupid things, like trying to jump off the stage and do a face plant, and, <laughs> but, you know, um, just nothing really uh, particularly crazy, but that would be the one story that took the, uh, took the cake, I guess. Okay. Anything else you would like to... Uh mention about Anger's art? Anything that I haven't asked you you want to make sure people and fans know? Um, I can't really say anything offhand. Uh, uh, if the music at all intrigues you, uh, come find us. You can find us on Reverb Nation or Facebook or whatever, or you probably find a link through the radio show here. And if you dig it, then just uh, make contact with us. Each one of us in the band, we're all pretty uh, sociable. We love talking with people. Um, I'd like to pull you in if, you, if, you, if we appeal. Or if it appeals to you, we'd like to pull you in just make you a part of the family. It's that simple. Okay. Well, and I, I totally appreciate that. What, um, where's the best place for people to go to find out more about you guys? What, like, Facebook, you guys have a website. I mean, what's what's your best uh, way for people to find out more? Uh, the best way and most sure way is probably Facebook because, I mean, I'm sorry to say that, but most all of us are on Facebook all the time. So uh, facebook.com slash art, And you can also find uh, music on Reverb Nation, ReverbNation.com, Angerizart. Uh, we got a YouTube channel slash Angerizart. Um, it's, it's out there. Uh, but Facebook would probably be about the first place because if you want to make direct contact with us, you probably hear from any one of the four of us within, say, an hour or so. So that would probably be the best. Okay. And then where's going to be the best place to purchase the album when it comes out? 
Actually, there's a link that we have up on the uh, on the Anger Reserve uh, Facebook page at the moment. Uh, OSM Records is actually doing pre-orders, and they're starting to take orders now for the album. Uh, you could look at, uh, if you don't mind me giving a plug, it's www.osmrecords.net, and then follow the prompt to store, and you should get it there. Uh, OSM for Old School Metal Records. Ah, very cool. Um, yeah, the whole interview is about you plugging your band, so no, I don't mind. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's the point, man. Gotcha. What about merchandise? You gonna have, can they find merchandise there as well? Merchandise, we don't really do a whole lot of shipping just yet. We're probably going to get that going in the next couple of months or so. But merchandise is something that we usually drag around to the shows. Right, so go to a show if you want merch. It's probably the best thing, although if you do some inquiries on the, uh, get, a, get a hold of us and do some inquiries, we'd be happy to send something out. Right, okay, very good. Okay, I have one last thing to ask you to do before I let you go. Sure. I would love a couple of radio tags from you if you don't mind. Sure, Absolutely. So the first one, you can say, you know, this is Steve from Angra's Art, and you're listening to rockaddictradio.com. Okay. You ready? Yep. Everybody, this is Steve from Angra's Art, and you are listening to rockaddictradio.com. Perfect. And then the second one will be specifically for my show, so you can say the exact same thing you just said, but just throw in there that you're listening to DJ Rem. Okay. Everybody, this is Steve Gaines from Angra's Art. You're listening to DJ Rem on rockaddictradio.com. Okay, man. Thank you very much. I totally appreciate you taking the time to call me today. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for letting me reschedule. Yeah, no, no. I, I'm easy to get along with. Not a biggie. Cool. Not a big deal. Oh, hey, uh, this will be, within the next week, I'll have this uh, edited and uploaded on YouTube, and then I, I'll post a link on the on your uh, Facebook page so you can sp- spread it out there. That sounds great, man. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yep, no problem. Well, you have a great day, okay? You bet, man. You too. Yeah, bye. bye.